You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Good morning. This morning we are continuing our look at Australia and its natural problems. Actually, dryness or aridity, as it is generally called by geographers, is probably the most challenging of Australia's natural problems. And so it's very important in this course for you to have a good understanding of the subject. For Australia, water is a precious resource, and its wise management is of the greatest importance. As I've said, Australia is a dry continent, second only to Antarctica, in its lack of rainfall. Long hours of hot sunshine and searing winds. Give Australia an extremely high rate of evaporation, far more than in most other countries. It's estimated that approximately 87 percent of Australia's rainfall is lost through evaporation, compared with just over 60 percent in Europe and Africa, and 48 percent in North America. You generally think of Africa as being a very hot and dry place, but it's not. In comparison with Australia, in many parts of Australia, standing water—that is, dams, puddles, and so forth—dry up rapidly, and some rainfall barely penetrates the soil. The reason for this is that the moisture is absorbed by thirsty plants. Some parts of Australia are dry because rainwater seeps quickly through sandy soils and into the rock below. In parts of Australia, this water, which seeps through the sandy soil, collects underground to form underground lakes. Water from these subterranean lakes can be pumped to the surface and tapped, and so used for various purposes above the ground. In fact, extensive underground water resources are available over more than half of Australia's land area. But most of the water is too salty to be used for human consumption or for the irrigation of crops. However, most inland farmers do rely on this water for watering their animals, and, where possible, to a lesser extent, for irrigation. <laughs> 